Welcome back to the Agora Cafe. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey, namely uh, a little video tour of my old childhood neighborhood, San Diego. Um, uh, I'm going to do it via uh, the uh, street view function in um, uh, Google Maps. Um, now the images in Google Maps are all uh, copyrighted, uh, but I look through their terms of service and as I read them, uh, uh, they are, uh, I'm allowed to use them so long as A, the use is uh, non-commercial which this is, and B, so long as I uh, give appropriate credit for each image, and they say in the terms of use that uh, the, that text at the bottom right of the image that you hopefully can see there uh, is sufficient uh, credit. I don't need anything further than that. Um, so assuming that I've interpreted uh, these uh, requirements correctly, um, then uh, uh, YouTube should not take this down. Uh, so I'm just going to start with my uh, elementary school from the early 70s, Silvergate Elementary. Um, I don't remember this sign, though that doesn't mean it wasn't there. The sign I remember is this one. The name Silvergate comes from the, from the, uh, the days when, uh, long time ago, um, the uh, uh, San Diego, San Diego was contemplating adopting the nickname Silvergate as a uh, rival to San Francisco's Golden Gate, since, you know, they have two of the, you know, the major harbors on uh, the California coast. In fact, maybe one point they're even going to call Balboa Park, Silvergate Park, uh, which I guess makes, you know, at least as much sense as Balboa Park, since Balboa never had any connection with it. Uh, but Balboa, because he was the one who discovered the Pacific as supposed to be uh, um, uh, sort of a symbol for the Pacific in general. Anyway, I also thought it was odd to pick Silver Gate to rival with San Francisco's Golden Gate. It's like deliberately picking the, uh, you know, the number two metal this fence right here used to have, when I was a kid, it had a, a street sign in an intersection of a Venice uh, Street and Savoy Circle, even though the actual intersection is not there. It's a little bit farther back, and I see they no longer have that street sign there. We used to be there right next to the uh, fence, and I used to wait by that fence for my mother, for my mother to come in the car and pick me up. And uh, I would fantasize that the fence was a horse and that the uh, pole with the street sign was the horse's neck and that the street sign saying Venice and Savoy crossed where the, was the horse's head. Um, and, that the, and that Venice Savoy was the name of the horse. Um, I must have been pretty desperate. Uh, anyway. Uh, Next, I'm going to take you to uh, my old address. I can't show you my old house because it's been torn down. Um, they put a much larger and fancier house in it instead. Um, uh, there we're getting some nice 
blue skies. Sweet home San Diego, where the skies are so blue. Sweet home San Diego, Lord, I'm coming home to you. What happened to the arrow? Why can't I move this further? Well, I'll just cheat and jump. There we go. So, uh, you can see this is a very pretty uh, neighborhood with a nice view of the uh, of the ocean and we wonder, well, this is supposed to be a pretty expensive area. How could we afford it? Well, we couldn't, um, but uh, my grandmother could um, since she'd stolen my mother's inheritance. Um, I think I've talked about that in another video. Um, and then she would dole it out to us to uh, basically to control my mother. Um, my mother initially didn't want to take any money from her, but once she, once she had me as a child and my father had died, then she uh, uh, felt she couldn't afford to turn down financial help. And uh, grandma wanted to keep her near where she lived in San Diego. And so she helped out uh, financially with this house, which was the house we stayed in was, and I didn't realize it at the time, but years later, before they turned it, tore it down, I came back and saw it and saw it. It was the smallest house on the street. It was really tiny uh, compared to every other house on the street. Um, and it's since been replaced by, as you'll see, a much larger house. But anyway, this is a beloved neighborhood for me. Uh, everything is so pretty. And that view, every time you, every time you you know, pass and there you view the, there are actually some, some houses in this area, you know, up on the hill that have view of both the ocean and the bay, uh, one direction or the other. Um, imagine those cost a pretty penny. Um, Okay, we're coming up on my old street pretty soon. There it is, Granger. And then that building on the right, that uh, large squarish building is uh, where my house used to be. Um, we had, you know, it, ours was only one story, not two, and it had a, a big front lawn, which has been replaced by uh, this, um, uh, this uh, car park. But there it is. I imagine they get pretty good views from up there. Um, This house next door looks new to me, too. I don't, uh, you know, I don't recall the house next door looking quite like that. I used to take care of their cats when they were away. Um, I 
And I were trick or treating with my friends Brian and Jamie on this street. It's a little hard to tell from the um, uh, on on the street view here, though. From the fact that you can see the ocean before and you can't now, you can sort of tell that this is a hill. But it doesn't look the hill doesn't look as steep as it actually was. It wasn't super steep, but it was you know it was more of a hill than this. So come here. And then if we want to get to the coast, we go here and there's this little alley going up there. And I actually want to show you the alley. So I'm going to backtrack. to back up here. And this is the alley that runs behind all the houses on Granger. So let's see, did I miss it? Let's show right that there. That's that's the place where our old house was. Um, and there was I don't know, you know, you can't really tell what their yard is like now, but when I was there it was this massive jungle with all these uh, cactus plants that uh, our dogs couldn't go near without getting you know, stuck full of needles, but our cats could easily, you know, go around them and under them and so forth and never, you know, never got any needles. So I used to practice riding my bike uh, down this alley. Here the alley gets a little bit less finished. Now you really, you know, look at this. You you don't really think that you're in. You, know, you think you're uh, out. Um, you think you're farther away from the center of things than you really are when you see this this area here. This it looks like you'd be in some tropical isle. Anyway, this is all on Point Loma, uh, which is the the big peninsula that separates uh, the San Diego Bay from the Pacific Ocean, in which makes it possible to have a silver gate, so to speak. Um, yeah, they're very tip of uh, Point Loma is the Cabrillo National Monument, uh, which is has some of the best views um, 
But we're not going there today. Just hanging around the old neighborhood. All right, so this is now we've come out of the place that I showed you before. Now, when I get to where the action is, Namely, you want to get to the coast. So if you go right, it'll take you to Orange, uh, Orange Beach. Sorry, wrong state. To Ocean Beach. Um, and if you go left, it'll take you to Sunset Cliffs. I'm going to go left just a little bit to give you an idea, and then we'll head over to Ocean Beach, which is quite a bit of my neighborhood. Uh, the farther you go in this direction, the more expensive the houses get. And we have this nice little park here. You can see this sort of thing. And this sort of thing. And this sort of thing. Just jumping around a bit randomly, but uh, it's all very familiar. All right, so you get an idea of what this area looks like. It's called Sunset Cliffs because there are cliffs and it's a great place to watch the sunset. All right, now I'm going to take us uh, back to Sunset Cliffs Boulevard and heading toward Ocean Beach, which is the commercial district here. And just sort of my one of my favorite places to be. Back then, it was near my home. Well, it was the only commercial district near my home. Only place you could really walk or bike to. I don't think I ever biked there. My mother would have thought that was too exciting for me to bike all the way out here. But I never, never got that expert at biking in traffic. We usually went to a, a park somewhere to practice my bike. I realize this is not quite as engaging as an actual video tour, but you know, we make do with what we can. Yeah, it'll give you an idea of why this is a kind of a cool neighborhood coming up.
you can't tell from here, but Narragansett has good views at the end there. Um, but we're not going to Narragansett now. We're headed toward Newport Avenue. This is Newport Avenue. This is the main drag in Ocean Beach. It's kind of a funky little beach town. That's the Breakfast Republic where I had breakfast with my friends Gary and Alicia the last time that I was here. Down this this area is where I, as a kid in the '70s, first discovered comic books. Uh, I think the um, I think it's a Harrington font over there, isn't it? No, not quite, but almost. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, which there's no guarantee of. Um, anyway, um, the particular stores where I used to get comics are not here anymore, but. Uh, this is where I first got into uh, superhero comics and horror comics and all that good stuff. The other main street, although we're not going there now because you know, I don't want to take too much time. The other, the other main street in Ocean Beach is a number of blocks. Uh, uh, to the right, we'll be going in that direction in a bit, but we won't really go to that street. Is Voltaire Street, um, which has a um, has a vegan co-op that uh, I remember um, uh, was um, when we took Jeff Tucker there. He was horrified, traumatized. I don't think he's ever quite recovered from it. Uh, we kept saying, isn't there a McDonald's? Um, all right, this, this, uh, wings, uh, swimwear place. As you can might guess from the marquee there, uh, used to be a um, movie theater. Like we used to have these kids matinees where parents would drop their kids off. I don't think they were supposed to drop them off. I think they were supposed to stay with them, but they would drop them off. My mother would stay with me, but the most of the parents would drop the kids off to get rid of them in the for the kids matinees, and it was uh, it was like Lord of the Flies in there. Well, not quite, but it was. Pretty chaotic, the all yelling and running around and throwing food. Uh, not really there for the cinematic experience. This is a famous hostel. Uh, Galactic Comics that wasn't there when I was there, but. There are a lot of good, uh, there are a lot of excellent murals in, um, in Ocean Beach. And then there's that one.
Oh, wow. It's an odd mural for this location because this location is a place with a very hippie, lefty vibe. And I'm sure not everyone is happy with, with that uh, super patriotic mural. Um, uh, this place is famous for absolutely gigantic hamburgers that are really real challenge to try and deal with. A hodad is someone who um, who hangs out with surfers and and you know is on the surfer lifestyle but doesn't actually do that much surfing. I've never been up there, but that would be a um, uh, on that rooftop uh, bar there, but that would be a cool thing to do sometime. Um, I've eaten at, I think, that Japanese restaurant was pretty good. There's Ocean Beach Hotel. I've stayed there. It's a very nice view, although the air conditioner in my room was so loud, I felt like I was in the middle of some kind of industrial factory. Um, okay, I want to take you to the right, but first I want to take you to the left. Uh, I want to show you the pier. This is the way to the pier. You don't see an arrow here, but you actually can. I guess there's, there's a little leap you have to leap past, and then there you are. Um, there's the famous gate. Cooperating with. If you look over here to the right, oh, well, we're already a long way past the beach now, but um, the nearest part of the beach is for. Um, uh, surfers, then the middle parts of the beach is for swimmers, and then the the far the farthest part of the beach is for dogs, or for well, humans with dogs. Um, I've been to this place too. It's nothing special, but it's a cool location. Um, and. It's the end of the pier. According to this little map, I'm in the middle of the water. I trust everything you see. Okay, heading back to the mainland. Right there, you get a better view of the um, of the beach with the uh, the near part uh, for surfers, the farther part for swimmers, and you'll see a a short jetty 
rock jetty that uh, uh, I think is where is what the divide is between the um, the swimmers beach and the dog beach. I believe that's right. I remember my um, my mother and I and our our dogs used to walk out on that jetty. Um, one of our dogs did it easily. The other one had lots of trouble. Uh, the first dog would show off and go back and forth to show the second one. Um, then farther away, you can see a much longer jetty and that marks the entrance to the uh, San Diego River. And beyond that is Mission, uh, Mission Bay. Okay. So back down to Newport Avenue. Whoops, I ended up in the parking lot of the Ocean Beach Hotel. Back in the 19th and maybe the early 20th century, there was a big amusement park here, but it's long since been torn down. Though there's a um, there's another one up in Mission Beach that is still going strong. So this is Abbott Street. Which is runs along the coast here. Now we're back in a more residential area. As you can see. And if we went farther, we'd eventually come up to Voltaire Street, which is the, you know, which is you know, more, well, actually, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take you up there. Why not? Um, and then come back. Voltaire Street is one of the, the number of streets that come off of Rosecrans over at the other side of Point Loma. There's a whole bunch of streets that are named after famous authors running A through Z and then when they run out then they start over again, though they don't get all the way through the alphabet a second time. And a few of the streets have changed their names, thus ruining them. But they actually have a Xenophon Street, which is cool. It's, I'm a fan of Xenophon, I think he's a underrated. Anyway, so this is Voltaire Street, which is the, um, the other major commercial street. So beach that way, but in this direction. Um, it's still fairly residential right along here. But now the commercial part starts. Cafe Bella drive through. Of course, these photos are all pre pandemic. Uh, probably some of these places are going out of business, and ones that aren't are at least probably hunkered down a bit.
where's that where's that vegan place that we dragged but really as angela keaton dragged jeff tucker to i was just along for the ride um it's a large building on the right side I'm not there yet i don't think but i might have passed it and missed it here Oh, this, uh, I, think, I suspect this is it. People's Organic Food Market. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm not absolutely sure. I saw it when we went there, it was nighttime. Um, but I think that's what it is. All right, so we've seen a little bit of Voltaire Street. It's not quite as cool and funky as uh, Newport Avenue, but it's it's all right. Um, it has a cool name. Cooler than Newport, really. Uh, all right, now I'll find my way back to get back, get back, get back to where I once belonged. I don't want to say those are the only two commercial streets in here, a bunch of other ones, but uh, here we are. This is the intersection of Brighton and Abbott, and we're going to head toward the beach. Abbott ran along the beach, but then, since it wasn't exactly parallel to the beach, it got farther and farther away from it. Uh, I'm going to go in where it says no exit. I mean, no entrance, because wrong way, because I can. There, you can see the the pier there in the distance. Yeah, so this is a place to park if you can't find any place to park closer in. This is a place to park. I'm like those realtors saying, this is the bathroom. Like you can't recognize a bathroom when you see one. Um, Oops, not thing that I want. Oh, I know you did. You did. All right, this is the bike bike path. This bike path runs along the San Diego River, which is a slimy godforsaken river in some ways but um that's not so bad here where we see the ocean but uh farther in like when it gets to fashion valley it's a sort of a slimy thing um anyway this bike path goes a good long way Very long way. It's a great place. It's a great place to ride a bike. The bike path is up there is the sky. 
Down there's the ground. That's called a person. This is a very informative and educational video. Okay, the part of the bike path that's been recorded for Street View. Well, doesn't seem to want to let me go here, but this implies I can go. Boom, there we go. Every once in a while, as a reach a point on Street View, we won't let you go any further. We just, you cheat and hop past it, and then you can go again. I don't know if cheat, it's not really cheating. This takes the fun out of it if I say it's not really cheating. So let's see it's cheating. Not that scenic on the right side, right? It's scenic on the left side. Yeah, this is this is the part of the San Diego River that isn't all creepy. Um, You could follow this bike path a very long way, although as you'll see, Street View doesn't. Um, but I think this bike path goes quite a long way inland. Okay, now it becomes more scenic on both sides. This is the probably the best part of the bike path. I think that is, is that the skate park? There's a, there's a famous skateboard park. And I think it's, that's it. Can't see from here, but I believe that's it. Yeah, and that's a skateboard park. And so this is the bridge that goes over to uh, uh, Mission Bay and all that stuff. Um, and now we're actually back on Sunset Cliffs Boulevard and Somewhere near here is a place you can catch the freeway. Um, uh, and if you're uh, taking the freeway in, it just, it'll shoot you right into Sunset Cliffs. Um, anyway, so I think that's, uh, all I'm going to burden you with. Um, so that's my uh, uh, my childhood neighborhood in San Diego, uh, between Sunset Cliffs and Ocean Beach, out on Point Loma, and uh, just thought you might enjoy it. And if you didn't enjoy it, we have to watch it anyway because that's the rule. And if you break the rule, then you're cheating, and we know how much fun that is. Uh, all right, so see you next time.